Welcome to She's a Full-On Monet, a digital lifestyle magazine for women. Every week, our editor-in-chief, Kelly Castillo, along with Megan Block and special guests, participate in a deep dive discussion about recent articles and topics we have covered. We invite you to become part of our community where everyone's welcome. Welcome to episode, are we episode eight now? I think we're episode eight. Yeah, that's crazy. We're rolling along. Um, of She's a Full on Monet. I'm your host, Kelly Castillo, and I have here with me as usual, Megan. Hello. <laughs> and today, um, you know, we picked a lighter topic the last couple of weeks, which I think everyone probably appreciated a little break from the heavy topics, but we're kind of back with a heavy topic today. Um, we wanted to talk about uh, things to say and things not to say to someone when they've recently lost a loved one. I know um, this comes up, I think, at some point. I don't know what that was. I, this comes up for everyone at some point in their lives. They have to attend a funeral or they have a friend or family member who lost someone. And, um, you know, a response is appropriate, but there's a lot of things you can say that uh, don't help and definitely don't make them feel better. And um, if you have lost someone, you'll also understand uh, the people who had an uh, appropriate reaction and how that comforted you versus um, kind of putting their awkwardness and emotional burden onto your shoulders. So that's the topic we're covering today. Again, I'm sorry, it's heavy, but I do hope that this topic does um, help someone out there who is dealing with this right now. So yeah, that's where we are. That's today's topic. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I like the topic because it's something I feel like we all can relate to on some way, shape or form. We can all either be on the receiving or the giving end of the situation. And we are all kind of going in and into it at some point for the first time. <laughs> and you don't like, you mean well, but sometimes you're like, Oh, and then you're like, you're like falling back and making it worse. And you're like, man, if there was just like, a rule book on this whole thing because it's so you know it's so niche and so specific but also again so universal and so um, inevitable in a way where I feel like everyone could use maybe just some insight from our side um, Monet's side on what would be the proper way to handle it not it's not like this is black or white you know everything it's it's kind of based on but there are definite <laughs> some ones that are like no 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 you should stay away from it um but yeah I think it's very niche and very specific and very heavy but also very necessary to have some sort of guide to like what do I do you know or say so I'm yeah I also that. think that um the response that that is appropriate for certain people or that you feel comfortable giving a lot of times has something to do with your religious faith or what you believe as far as afterlife is concerned. Um, I know it's people who are very religious. I have family members who are very religious and they uh, take great comfort in that faith. And so faith-based responses for them are extremely comforting where uh, if you are not a person of faith and you don't, you aren't religious or spiritual, maybe you don't believe in an afterlife at all then those kind of responses will really fall flat and will not comfort you and actually could offend. So I think a, a, a very big part of this is, you know, reading the room, knowing who you're speaking knowing to. Knowing your target audience and knowing, yeah. that, knowing a bit about them and knowing like if they are really religious and maybe you're not, but maybe saying those words that you're not necessarily comfortable with saying will give them some peace. But yeah, definitely reading the room and knowing your audience um yeah I also think a lot of it has to do with some people are just they get um what they feel awkward when when things that are uncomfortable come up and it almost brings out like a more uncomfortable side of them and so sometimes what can be perceived as being rude or insensitive is just their natural way of like handling the situation because they just like straight up don't handle these situations well. So certainly for those people, if you're looking for a bit of advice or a guideline on how to handle it, like, because you're just not good with those situations, who is, you know yeah. what I mean? But you know what I mean? Like some, it just makes them feel almost like they want to avoid it. But what if it's like your best friend, you can't avoid that. You don't want to seem insensitive or your boss or your coworker or something like you have to say something, but you're like, what do I say? You know? Yeah. We are going to give some suggestions today and talk about the 
you know, proper things to say versus what isn't usually helpful. But I want to, I want to preface this too, by saying that, um, I can't tell you how many people I know who have lost someone close to them and, um, did not hear from some of the people they thought were their closest friends, yeah. um, afterwards, they did not yeah. get any condolences at all. So if you are really nervous or uncomfortable thinking that you're going to say the wrong thing, I have to strongly encourage you you saying something is better than not, not acknowledging it at all. It's and even if you're in, yeah, even if you're uncomfortable, um, staying away from the people who are grieving grief, um, you know, witnessing another person's grief is a very uncomfortable situation. It's uncomfortable for every single person who is that comfort person. So you're not, you know, isolated from this. Nobody enjoys being around someone who is grieving but at the same time, when y your closest friends or, or other family members don't reach out at all, don't um, stay in touch with you, and that is a very isolating feeling. And so saying something, even if it's maybe on our list of what not to say, that would be better than yes, not saying anything. Yes, a thousand percent. It's better to say something than nothing at all because that person silently knowing whether they can count on you in their darkest moments, unfortunately. And if you just ghost them because it's uncomfortable for you, it, I mean, yeah, it's, it's like, I don't want to be like, Oh, it's taking the easy way out, but it, it kind of, it, like just sends some sort of message, some sort of love some way, even if it's on the list of what not to say, certainly better than nothing at all. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. For sure. So I, I, as we spoke about um, in earlier episodes, I lost my grandmother in 2017. She was like a mother to me. Um, raised me and was my person. And um, so I found at that time that um, uh, some people did exactly the right thing and really what they brought to the table um, really comforted me and made me feel just, it was such a gesture of love and support. But a vast majority of people um, did not understand the level of grief I was dealing with because everybody you loses their grandparents usually in their lifetime. Yeah. And, um, the relationship that I had my, with my grandmother was not, you know, just an average grandparent grandchild relationship. Um, and I had lost her to dementia, which is like losing someone slowly for years. And so I heard a lot of people saying things like, Oh, well, you know, she lived a long life. <laughs> That's very true. Ooh. She was 92 when she passed. That is a very long life. I was very blessed to have her as long as I did. That didn't lessen the impact that her loss had on me. She Got could it. have been 102 and it would have hurt just the same. Mm -hmm. um, or to hear someone just respond to say, oh, oh I lost my grandmother when I was 12. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like I, I, I hear you that you're trying to connect and tell me you know how it feels, but it, what your statement sounded kind of competitive and you don't want to do that. You don't want to make it about you um, when the, it needs to be about the other person and their loss. And so there were a lot of things that, you know, I heard a lot. She's in a better place. She's not suffering anymore. Yes. She had dementia. Yes. Her quality of life was greatly deteriorated, but, um, I don't, it did not comfort me to think that, um, it made me feel like my grieving process was selfish because I would have rather had her here with me than um, have her be gone, even though everyone was saying, oh, well, she's not suffering anymore. You know, she doesn't have dementia in the next life. Okay. I, I understand that. Like, as a, I know, I know what you're trying to say, but um, it, it felt kind of diminishing. It felt like they were trying to diminish the, my level of grief by saying I should be thankful or I should be grateful that she's, her pain is over. And in a sense you are, but at the same time, you, your pain is real. Your pain is right now. So you don't want to say anything that diminishes the other person's pain. And you don't want to say anything that sounds like you're one-upping them or competing with them on the loss level. And um, you definitely don't want to comment about that the person had a long, a long life or, you know, everybody has to go at some point. <laughs> I know that <laughs> no one is living forever in this scenario, but it just, anything that kind of makes the person's grief um, feel less important or, um, less relevant or that they should, you know, be quick to get over it because of any kind of extenuating circumstances is just not, in my opinion, not helpful. 
Sorry, I um I had to mute because like the gardener showed up. It's the oh. day of crazy. Um, <laughs> I th it it might be just on my end. If you if it gets too loud or something distracting, you just let me know. But okay. I can hear it on my end. Um, yeah, no, I completely agree. I sometimes it's like a sudden loss or like a not so um not an I just lost my grandpa actually over the pandemic and. I heard all those things too. Oh, we lived a long life, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, there's honestly to be, there's nothing you can say to make it better. Like, you know, but saying those kinds of things, it's like almost trying to lessen the hurt, you know, when yeah. really all the person's trying to naturally do is make you feel like it's going to be okay. Like it's such a weird time, you know, that's why for me, when someone loses someone, regardless of the age or like the lifespan or whether it was expected or not, or, you know, whether it was out of the blue, it's just like, I'm so sorry for your loss. I'm here for you. If there's anything I can do, I always try and send something like some sort of food or something like that, because, you know, coming from someone who's lost my mom and it was sudden and she wasn't older. Um, it, that helped a lot with my family because we didn't want to, prepare food. Um, I just think that that's a nice gesture because it's thoughtful. Um, but I don't go and try and justify or say anything or go above and beyond. Cause it's just like, like I said, I was on the, I was on, I was on the person who lost someone before I really knew anyone close to me who lost anyone. So I knew exactly what I didn't want to hear. So I knew exactly what I didn't want to say to other people, you know, and, um, it's a tough situation regardless, but, um, you definitely don't want to try and lessen their pain by like bringing up obvious things, <laughs> you know, like, oh, they lived yeah. a long life, you know, or, oh, they're not in pain anymore. And it's like, we know these things, you know, and it's, it's just a natural thing that we want to do. Cause we don't want to just say nothing, you know, mm. that, that I think we're all afraid of that empty space of like nothing. That's the, uh, during the conversation, when you find someone lost someone, it's like, well, you know, you got to fill it with something. <laughs> so sometimes our brain just goes into quick thinking mode and you're like stating random facts and you're like, Oh, I think I'm making this worse. You know, yeah. um, <laughs> it's, it's all, it's all in good. It's all for the good intention, right? It's never mean, mean intended, but it's like sometimes when our brain just goes into naturally thinking mode, it can kind of worsen it. <laughs> I agree. And I think if, if you're someone like either of us that has lost someone close to you, um, the closest person, then, um, you, you do have much more empathy. You have much more understanding. I'm sure, you know, when you lost your mom, you were probably the first person in your friend group to lose anybody. Mm -hmm. And, um, so everyone I lost would have my been mom before I lost my great grandma. Yeah. Crazy. So everyone wouldn't so have had an idea of just, what to say. Yeah. And, and it's, and no, and even then it was like sudden and no one really saw it coming. And so it wasn't even like, you can go to the natural, like when someone loses a grand, like when I lost my grandpa and everybody was like, wow, 90 something, that's amazing. And you're like, you know, they almost feel yeah. worse because it was just so like out of the blue and that person was robbed, but you don't want to say anything to make it the pain harder. So you just try and like, <laughs> it's like, yeah. what do you say? What do you say? You don't say anything. You say, I'm here for you. I'm, I'm thinking about you. If there's, if there's semi-religious or you are, and you feel comfortable saying you're, you and your family are in my prayers. That's always nice. That's you know, always welcome. My family are in my thoughts. That's always like an yeah. alternative, less religious, you know, alternative, but sent, like sending flowers, sending food. That's always like a, you know, with a nice card that says, just thinking of you always here for you checking in on them, you know, just like, how are you doing? I'm just thinking of you, but making it less about the loss and more about them because mm -hmm. they're already consumed in the loss that they don't need to be reminded of these facts or these feelings. That, or the I think morals. some people feel like, Oh, um, especially when it's that some time has passed. Um, so, some people feel like I don't want to bring that person up anymore because I don't want to remind them of the loss. And I'm here to tell you, <laughs> we don't need reminding the loss is present every day in our lives. So, uh, you bringing up the person is not going to cause us pain or remind us. We, we have never forgotten. Um, so I, for one, find it very comforting and, um, really sweet when people bring up my grandmother um, I love that. I love when people still say her name or talk about her because I feel like often, um, you know, me and my sister and my dad are the only ones still thinking about her. So it makes me feel less, um, less sad, less alone. I do like talking about her. So it's nice when someone brings her up 
And um, also, like, I don't, they were on this earth and then they weren't. So it keeps their spirit alive. It's like you were so ripped from their presence and their being so quickly without sometimes without notice. And even when we have noticed, it's still just like hot jarring yeah. that it's like just bringing up like, oh, like I remember when your grandma did this or, oh, you look like your eyes are like your grandma's eyes. It just makes like them feel like for a moment they're, they're with us, you know, yes. I just think that's great. Yes. And I have, I have a a friend, um, her and her husband were our good friends of, of my and my husband. And we traveled together. We took a lot of trips together. They would come and stay at our house. We would go to their house in LA and stay over. We were very close. And about two years ago she died and, and it was, it was a violent situation. And, um, so it was very sudden, unexpected. And her husband has been in a really dark place since then. He's having a really hard time, understandably, dealing with this and the court case that followed and everything that happened. So I, I know I've spoken with other friends of other mutual friends of ours, and they have sometimes expressed that, um, not that he should be over it by now, but that his grief is going on so long. They're finding it tedious. Mm -hmm. It's hard to be around him. Um, it's, you know, all he talks about it's, it's emotionally (laughs) draining for someone else to be. And it's like, at some point, yeah. Yeah. yeah but how, I mean, telling someone, Oh, they died so long ago. You should, you should be over this by now. That is definitely not helpful. No, so, I've had people tell me that about my mom that I was, and to be fair, I was very depressed and very sad for a very long time. And I did use that situation as what you can call a crutch, but to say out loud that like, you need to like move on from it. Like, I don't care yeah. who passed away, who, no one has the right to say that to anyone. No, your grief is, is a, is a, <laughs> long, is is your a own. profit a process. Yeah. Yeah. It's a process and it's probably a process you'll have the rest of your life. Um, yeah. so it goes through stages and, and you should be allowed to feel and experience those stages in whatever order and for however long that you need to, to process it. Um, and yeah, if you start using it as a crutch, definitely that's an issue, but at the same time, if you need Other, to seek like additional help, then yeah. there's a way to go about telling that person in a loving way, you know, but to yeah. like straight up tell them like, get over it. Like it was like a bad boyfriend decision, you know, it's like not the same thing. It's a personal journey. And yes, it takes people sometimes longer than others, but we're who, who's anyone to say that, you know, we're, we're right. not in that person's shoes. We didn't just lose our so-and-so. And even then it's a personal loss, you know? Right. So, and my grief if I'm grieving, isn't going to look like your grief. If you're grieving, everybody's is individual. So if you think someone is handling it too well and they're not taking it seriously enough, or they are down in the dumps for years and they're becoming, you know, boring to be around their grief is their process. And it doesn't, it doesn't need to look like what your process looked like or what anyone else's did. So that's definitely being patient with the person going through the process is a huge thing. Um, some of the other things I've heard people say that don't help is, um, there's a reason for everything that that's, that doesn't help. And I don't, I don't see how that is supposed to comfort or help any, anybody, or it was their time to go. Um, mm-hmm. how is that? How is that meant to comfort? Again, I really, I don't all understand. Things we as human beings have, the thought has crossed our minds and it does not help because I think when we're going through those stages of grief and like acceptance, you know, all those different things, like, I think our brain tries to grasp onto from the most like lo- logistical to the most insane concepts of why this happened, you know, it's well, so yeah, and- already thinking, well, it was their time to go. Well, they're yeah. not in pain anymore. So with you saying it, it's just like, yeah, our brain is already trying to like give a reason to this terrible thing that has just ripped my universe. Right. Thank you. And, <laughs> you know? and I think, if, if we're talking to someone we don't know very well and they're telling us about a death, our first question is naturally, how did they die? Yeah. Um, first of all, that question is so stupid. Like <laughs> how they died does not equate at all to what who again, they were. But again, the natural human, like just curiosity. It, and because on, we- Especially if it's out of the blue or someone's young or they were fine. Right. It's just crazy, you know? Yeah, we want to run down a checklist of whether or not I personally am in danger from this thing. Yeah. So, or if it was expected or like, I don't know, you just want to like understand where, what, where this is on the scale of what, ha- just, you're yeah, just, and brain's just, that's the brain trying to process. And it, it doesn't matter how the person died. Um, it doesn't no. impact how much they're missed or um, the grieving process. Oftentimes 
it might be a very delicate subject for people and be quite offensive to ask that question. But it is, it's, it's our way of dealing with our own mortality. We want to say, you know, oh, they had lung cancer. Did they smoke? Okay, I'm safe. You know, it's, it's such a totally, selfish question. Totally. totally. <laughs> yeah, we totally. make it into about us and it isn't about us. Totally. Yeah, it's terrible. It's absolutely, there's no good thing about this. Um, I certainly also think it's not something to necessarily not say, but it's something to not maybe do. Um, and it goes along in the line with patience is like sometimes people like to take something like somebody's debt, like somebody losing someone and turn it into like, oh, well, let's just like go on vacation and get your mind off of it. Or like yes. trying to rush like normalcy yes. or a fun situation, a lighthearted situation too quickly when the person is not there yet and making it seem like that's going to solve anything or like and then when they don't on it for a minute and then when they, they don't react, react properly acting right. It's like, right. Then they're ungrateful yeah. out of what you did for them. You took them on vacation. You planned yeah. a dinner. You did this. Yeah, and that. you're like out of your environment. I certainly think some getting out of the environment for sure of of the negativity, especially if you shared the home with someone, or like yeah, go for a walk. But like trying to plan a girls' trip to Vegas is like not appropriate, and it makes no. the person feel like they're like you. You're walking in this space of of grief with no guide of what's the right way to do it. So if someone gives you a suggestion and heaven forbid, if someone has lost someone, maybe when they were a kid, they lost their dad, not in the same time frame that you were in it. Um, I'm thinking that suggesting something like a girl's trip is not appropriate because they're just going to feel obligated to do it because they're like, well, maybe this is what I should do. Maybe this will fix everything. And it's like this pressure to, yeah, you know, like, oh, well, maybe this is what I, because you don't know, you don't know that that is going to actually make it worse, or that's going to actually make you feel pressured to feel normal when you're not there yet, you know? Right. And not it puts the burden of other people's experience on your shoulders. Totally. You, or you have to like suppress your feelings because you're around mm -hmm. people and you don't want to just lose it around people. Like, like that's not an okay thing. No one ever personally did that to me, but I, I have seen people do that with extreme breakups and, and deaths where they think it's just like, it'll make it better. Like, oh, let's go to Fiji. No, <laughs> like come yeah. at me in six months when I'm a better, more well-rounded person. And I've come to terms with what just happened. You know, exactly. For, yeah. I think it's just definitely a, what, maybe not what to say, but what not to do and what not to think to do quite yet. Yeah. And I want, I want to touch on something that I feel like should be obvious, but um, as women, I think this is a really important point. Um, if you have a friend or family member, a loved one who loses a child or loses a pregnancy, please do not tell them they can have another baby. <laughs> please do not do that. They know. I they know about that one. That one's tough. I went through, you know, because you, you were there yeah. around that time. Like I went through a miscarriage and, oh, that's like a whole nother, a whole nother. Please do not bring up that they'll have another child. Please, please, for the love of God, do not bring up like statistics, like, oh, one in four women, one in four women have it. Like, I'm sorry. No. I didn't know I was all of a sudden a statistic or like, we're in your all, case to tell you, oh, well you, at least you have one child already. Like, <laughs> okay. This is no idea. It, it, it's a, it, there's a lot, there's a lot you can touch on that subject. I even had somebody close to me tell me to not talk about it because like, it made them feel uncomfortable and they were thinking that it would make other people. I posted about it, something about it on social media. And he, this person who's very close to me decided that they, first of all, a man doesn't know <laughs> a clue about what is going on in that world. Um, he mansplained man. your grief to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me talk about the women. Um, but he told me not to talk about it because it would make other people uncomfortable. And I'm like, Oh, like so much. We all know about how it's not talked yeah. about enough. It's a whole other part of grief and losing a child loss, um, whether they were a miscarriage or, you know, sudden a stillbirth, or whatever, all of that, it's anything. Awful. Where, it's awful. Yeah. So, or I've had people lose friends of mine, lose children in infancy to sudden infant death, to other things. And I've had people tell them, Oh, well, um, at least, you know, you didn't really know the baby yet. You didn't have like a personality. Oh my and gosh. That is actually <laughs> that impossible is... to fathom that someone would actually say that to another human being. I'm hearing that, but I don't believe it. That's it's so callous and, and, and just unfeeling because it doesn't matter if we already have other kids. It no. doesn't matter if we can have other kids. This baby or child was an independent human being that is not replaceable. Um, 
it's just, it's so I can say from personal experience that the minute that you find out that you're pregnant, you are thinking about that baby 24 seven, every mm-hmm. decision you make, every, every, from how you sleep to what you eat, to what you say, to how your stress levels are, to how much water you take, you're thinking about that child. That child is very much a part of you since the minute you find out you're pregnant. So when somebody's like, Oh, you didn't like, no, like I was very attached to my, I lost mine like two and a half months in. I didn't even, you know, but it was traumatizing. So to, and, to and on top of when it's, in, <laughs> If it's a miscarriage, if it's a stillbirth, if it's SIDS, if it's something like that, that there's isn't you know, childhood already. cancer, Period. there's already an attachment. And we as women already have a tremendous amount of guilt over, is this my body that did this? Did I do something wrong? Um, did, could I have done something different? We, that's a normal thought process we go through. Hopefully we don't stay in that thought process because it isn't healthy, but um it, we also when, have like PTSD. You also worry, is this going to happen yeah. to me again? And you also have to deal with your partner losing, losing this life as well. There's like all this happening at once. And it, yeah, like that's a whole, that's a whole side of death. That's like very hard to say anything to someone, but there are certain things in the, in the child death and infant death and miscarriage world that like, you should never say. Yeah. <laughs> You've covered some very basic ones. Please. Like, please never say that because there's always an attachment. Um, and I'm, I'm not making any comparisons here. This is not the same thing, but even people who are grieving the loss of a pet, um, yeah. people, people's <gasps> pets are family to them and they have them for 15, 20 years often. There, um, there is first child. Like my, when I yeah. lost my dog, was my first kid. Like I grieve that. It just is like pretty hard, really hard. Some people like they can't have children and those are their children and will forever yeah. be their children. You have to be sensitive to that for sure. Right. But dismissing it, telling them, you know, they're being ridiculous, asking them right away. Why don't you just get a new dog? Like, Oh, people, (laughs) everybody's grief is they're entitled to it. If they're feeling feelings, then those feelings are valid. Um, they, you should not ever try to diminish another person's pain or make them feel guilty for feeling it. Yeah. And And if it makes you uncomfortable, just check in via text. It doesn't have to be super personal, but you don't have to like involve your world around it so much if they're not super close to you, but just know that if they are close to you from personal experience, you as well, they're going to be kind of like a little bit of this for a while. And they're going to be maybe not like the most fun gal in the bunch for a little bit or guy in the bunch. And you're just going to have to like, that's the part of a relationship, whether it's romantic or not that you just for better or worse, right? Like even if it's a best friend, like you just got to, because at some point it's going to happen to you. You're going to lose your mom, your dad, their sister, brother, and you're going to want that person that you were not there for to be there for you. You're going to want somebody to be there for you. Yeah. None of us are immune to loss. We will no. all in our lifetimes lose the people that we love. And, Absolutely. and so, I mean, just try, if you've never been through it, then try to imagine how you'd feel in that situation and what would help you. And if you really feel uncomfortable, you don't know what to say. You're too afraid to say the wrong thing. Like Megan said, just send a text and all it needs to say or, is thinking of you, ladder, like, you know, yeah, like, thinking like, of you, sending you warm thoughts, anything like that. It doesn't need to be super personal. You don't need to write that person, a beautiful poem or something. No one's no. putting expectations on you. I send you, like edible arrangements. They have a nice, like sympathy platter. It's really nice. I had it sent to me when I lost my grandpa and I'm telling you it, like it made, it made my week because it just was like it was, it was an extra thought, but it was just a small card, but it was just the thought. It's just a thought. Somebody thing. thought of you feel like they're being reached out. About. Yeah. Everyone just wants their, their pain to be acknowledged. Yeah. And for Hard someone to just text. say, Something Hey, like I'm that. thinking of you. Yeah. That's all that most people need. You don't really um, need to go into the detail of the situation or the person no. or the death. You just need to tell that person you're there. Um, things that are the best, I think to say are again, basic stuff. I'm thinking of you. I'm sending you warm thoughts. You're in my thoughts. Um, I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, That is, you can't offend anyone with that statement. And it's, I mean, the most basic statement of condolences. It's so Um, funny. It's like, if it's not written on a card, you probably shouldn't say it. Yeah. I mean, like no one ever saw a card that was like, oh, well, at least they're not in pain anymore. Yeah. Like it just, what's on those kind of cards, thinking of you, sending condolences, sending thoughts, like just think of what's on a condolence card and that. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Or, I mean, you can, you can be honest with the person and say, I don't have the right words or I don't know what to say, but I'm here for you. I'm thinking of you that, I mean, if you want to go beyond that, you definitely can, but I think that's the most basic. Oh yeah. And 
Yeah. I, mean, honestly, I think like, I don't have the words there or there are no words to make what is going on better at the moment. Just know I'm here for you. Like that's, that's honest and true and, and factual. And then that also relieves you of finding the words, <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. And I think, um, you know, what, what probably touched me the most, um, especially at my grandmother's service, which we had months after her passing, but uh, there were so many people there that I had never met before that introduced themselves and explained how they were a part of my grandmother's life. And they would all, um, tell me a story or share a memory of my grandmother, things I had never heard before. Yeah. And that to me, I even had them write them down because it was that. the most special thing to me to just, um, be able to be thinking of her and sharing something and feeling that closeness with her to hear a story about her that I had never heard mm-hmm. that I think if you have a memory of the person, um, if it's like a friend's parent that you were, you know, at their house a lot, when you were younger, you can say, you know, your dad made the best pancakes on Saturday morning. I'll never forget that. Those little reminders of a happy memory are probably the most comforting thing I can imagine sharing with someone who's, lo- who's lost someone. Again, it just brings them back to life for a few minutes, you know? And yeah, yeah, I, I, I love that. I think it's so true. And coming from two people who have lost someone very close, it's take that for what we say is truth. Cause it's, you know, it makes you forget that they're gone for a second. It's really mm-hmm. kind of cool. It makes you focus on a part of their life that wasn't about them passing. Yeah. And I mean, if you don't know, if you don't know the person who passed very well, if you've had met them once or not at all, um, and you just want to say something deeper than I'm thinking of you, um, you know, you can just tell the person, I know how much they meant to you and I know how much they'll be missed. They must've been so special for you to have those feelings. So, or ask them to share a memory with you that they have. Um, most people would really like to be talking about the person that they lost. Um, so if you ask them to share something about their loved one, you know, beyond how did they pass? What was their favorite color? Was your favorite memory? Like something like that. Um, that is a very helpful and thoughtful thing. Totally. I think. I yeah. Um, definitely again, like we said, no minimalizing and no comparisons. Um, but I think like the, my, my friend who lost his wife, it's been, um, almost, it's been two years now. Um, I, whenever I, something happens in my day to day life and I think immediately, Oh, I should call her. And then I remember, of course I can't because I wanted to tell her about something that happened that I know she would appreciate. Or, um, I, I will email him and I'll say, you know, I thought of her today. I saw this, you know, thing that I would have loved to take her to, or when my, when Gabby, when my daughter got into the same college that she went to, she didn't end up going there, but she got in. I um, took a picture of the of the entrance letter and I sent it to um, my friend's husband. And I said, I really wanted to share this with her today because I know she would have a lot to say about this. And so it just were kind of, I hope, and he's always responded very positively and said, thank you so much. Every time you reach out, it, it reminds me that I'm not the only one thinking of her and that she's not forgotten. And you always share something positive. So um, I don't do that. All, I mean, just for him, I do it for me too, because oftentimes we, we want to share something with that person who's no longer here. And so sharing it with their loved ones is, is just another way to kind of keep their memory alive. I love that. That's super cool. That's true. Yeah. So this is a difficult topic and I don't think there's a script that you can go off of that will be comforting every person's individual and what's going to be most comforting to them is individual as well. But I think um, the, the tips that we gave are a good starting point. And, and again, the biggest thing is not to say nothing. Yeah. Um, I had be there on some level for them. Yeah. And if you're not ready to say something, cause it's just, it just happened or it's just still so new. Like, if you're able to, you know, send something their way or just, you know, send a text saying, just thinking about you, I'm here anytime. Like just a small something is better than nothing. Yeah. My, my youngest daughter who's 19, she lost two friends during, um, the COVID quarantine and not from COVID from other reasons, but, um, that was a very difficult time for her because uh, they were her age. And um, that's always hard when you're young and you, and you lose someone who is young as well. It really makes you face your mortality. It wasn't the first um, person her age that she had lost or a close friend that she had lost, but it was two kind of in a row. And um, 
I think when it's your child that you're trying to comfort and the person who passed is also a child, you, there's not a lot that they, that they can grasp in that emotional time period because they're teenagers or younger. And, um, a lot of what would comfort someone who's older and maybe more rational thinking isn't necessarily going to comfort them. The, she couldn't be around her friends when this happened because uh, of the quarantine. So, um, one of the people who passed was the younger brother of one of her very best friends from a car accident. And, and, and one was another of her very close friends that she saw on a very regular basis. So the only thing that I could really do was to tell her that I was there for her and to just physically be there with her, just sit with her and let her cry it out. Let her tell me all her feelings and not invalidate them and not tell her she was wrong for feeling them or that other people had, you know, lost more people or in worse ways. I mean, don't, don't do that. Don't do comparison or minimalizing. I just sat with her and I just let her cry it out and tell me how she was feeling and how it was affecting her and to just let her know I was there. I mean, that's all you can do sometimes is just physically be there, be there so that they're not, they don't feel so they already feel emotionally alone, but to not feel physically alone. Sometimes it's just good to have a person there so they don't go further into a darker spiral of a place. They just need to be kind of like kept at bay in a certain area and having somebody there is good. They don't feel like pressured, like you have to do stuff while you're there, you know, just. No, I think I literally just sat next to her and rubbed her back and let her cry. Yeah. And, um, I mean, she was having a hard time processing how someone could be here one day and not be here the next, because when you're 19, 18, that's a new concept for you. So, um, she was dealing with immense amount of grief and then she was, and the tragedy of losing someone young in horrible circumstances. And then also her own ideas of mortality. Like if this could happen to them, then this could happen to me, which is, we all know that. I mean, as adults, we, we face our mortality on a regular basis, <laughs> but every time we get mammograms or, you know, pap smears or go to the doctor, we're like, Oh God, I hope it's nothing terrible. But when you're 18 and 19, you think you're invincible. You think you're yeah. 10 foot tall, you're bulletproof, nothing ever bad is going to happen to you. So when something, when the worst thing happens to someone your same age, um, there's, that brings up a whole, a whole bunch of other thoughts. Yeah. It, the world so, gets a little, a little less safe and cozy feeling and the world gets a little darker. I lost my mom when I was 20 and I, that was like, I never had to like lose a, like a, like a, somebody the same age, but I just feel like, and when you lose that person, the, the first person that's close to you and you have to really think about mortality and just like that, the, the world just gets a little less like warm feeling. And it just, it just it shifts you as a person, you know, right. sometimes it happens younger. Sometimes it happens when you're a teenager and it's just like, they just, it's a whole new world to process, you know? And that's yeah. terrible when it's somebody that that's young too, because then they're processing the fact that they missed out on so much, you know, yeah, and like, losing, they didn't expect that to happen to them, you know? Right. Losing people at that age, um, changes the way you see the whole world and the, your perspective, your whole paradigm changes. Yeah. And I know as, you know, as she went off to college, as she's been doing other milestones have happened in her life, she's facing the fact that that person that was, she was so close to will never reach those milestones. Yeah. So that is a very difficult thing. And I know, I mean, for, in some respects, it's like that for you because every milestone you've reached that your mother would normally be there for like your wedding, your birth yeah, of your children. It's almost like re visiting the death right each time and it's just just so sad regardless of what side you're on you know yeah yeah and I also I mean in in the same vein when um there's a a lot of young people today that pass from suicide or drug overdoses or as a result of issues with mental health and addiction and I just want to point out that um however they passed is not something that should impact how you respond to their family and their loved ones yes. and the grief that you express and that you allow them to feel and the condolences that you give, sh- there should be absolutely no shadow yeah. of and how I feel like passed. whether you want to admit it openly or not, if we feel like somebody, if we found out somebody's child died from something that was like self-inflicted, we almost feel like less bad about the situation or our brain wants to feel less bad about it because it's like, well, they were in this dark place and like, 
versus somebody who just got randomly hit by a car accident or something like that. It's like what happened to them should not matter how you respond to their, no. to their grief or like it just, you should just, man, you I feel though that better. there's more, there's more awkwardness in those situations because yeah. um, there's another layer on top of the grief. The parents have probably guilt. They probably have their own feelings they're dealing with of why did this happen? What could we have done? They, they may don't... have been battling it for a while. They yeah. may, that person may have gotten better at one point and then got, they got blindsided by the fact that they weren't better. You know, they may have been hiding mm -hmm. their addiction for years and not even known it. Like you don't want to just assume, you know, what's going on and just react to whatever you think you're assuming, <laughs> you know? Right. You don't yeah, know it's... what the backstory is. No. Terrible. And, and you never know how hard someone fought. You never know, um, how deep their issues were or what else they were dealing with. Yes. So uh, just don't allow the manner of their passing, whether it was something that could have been prevented or something they brought upon themselves or whatever you think in your own judgmental thoughts, don't allow that to come through in the condolences that you offer and mm -hmm. the amount that you're there for the family, because families going through something like that, there's so many of them these days. There's so many of yeah, these oh, young yeah. people. My brother, my brother's four years younger than me. He's lost so many more people than mm -hmm. I will, than I will lose within the next five. And he's younger than me. And it's all to the same stuff that you listed. Like, yeah, you know, my, my daughter too. So sad. Yeah. It's like Samantha that age. too. Yeah. And how old Samantha? 23. Maybe? Okay. Yeah. Kevin's like, th he's in his thirties, but it's just like, he's like 30, but it's just, it's terrible. That, that age area yeah. from the twenties to when 30 I, because people well, have so many people that have when I was in high school, we lost, um, we lost a, a kid who like fell in an icy lake. That was a really bizarre loss. We lost someone from a car accident um, be, or being hit by a car. And then there yeah. were some drunk driving situations because this was before Uber, right? It was, yeah. it was the eighties and early nineties. Yeah, that, that was the thing. Yeah. Yeah. But there was, I, I never lost anyone to suicide. I never lost sure. anyone to overdose when I was in high school. No one in my whole high school died of that. But now every single one of my kids has lost a friend it's to so suicide sad. or drug overdose or more than one friend. Yeah. I mean, several yeah. of the kids, it's been more than one. And, and it's so hard to say the right thing in those circumstances because there there's multi layers of, of grieving and of pain. And, um, and the, the, parents feel very judged and very isolated. So it's the time when you need to reach out the most and just offer unconditional support to say, and I'm check so in. Not sorry. Just one I'm time. Sometimes, sometimes people think like, Oh, I checked in when like ch check in again, check in two months, check in there ch two weeks, check in, yeah. check in and check in again, you know? So it's, I think that's, that they're they're going through different parts at different yeah. times and they're going to need different things at different times. And they may actually want to talk to you at different parts at different times. And they'd be, yeah, really I think that's, out. that's a very important point. And that's probably what we'll, we'll leave this with is that people, um, everyone, everyone comes out of the woodwork in the first few days to yeah. offer their condolences, to send things, to cook for you. And they say how sorry they are. And then, you know, it's a month or two months or six months or the anniversary yeah. and the grief is still there for you, but uh, nobody really wants to hear about it anymore. And, and no one's reaching out anymore. Mm -hmm. So if this is a close person to you and, and you feel comfortable doing that, reach out, you know, at, later on, reach out at the anniversary, the times when maybe everyone else has stopped reaching out because that's when they need someone the most. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. yeah, like Megan said, definitely, the things you know, have kind reach of died down and the, and the, and the, you know, the circus has kind of died down as I call it. And they're actually alone to process it and really. Yeah come to terms and go through the stages, that's when you still want to check back in on the person. Yes. Sure. Yeah. So, um, we will be having the article about this topic will be coming out, um, either today or tomorrow. And, uh, so I definitely, you know, encourage everyone to read it. I feel like we covered a lot of, of really good tips, um, today, but we'll definitely go in depth in the article as well. And we'd love to hear from you guys. If you have, um, comments or suggestions, um, you can leave them on our Facebook discussion group, or you can comment on the article itself. We always love to hear from you guys. We want to thank you for listening. We appreciate the support and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode. Don't forget to bookmark our site. She's a full on Monet.com. 
and subscribe to our newsletter. You can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. If you're enjoying this podcast, it helps us a lot if you can follow, rate, and review. See y'all next week. Yeah.